Hello and welcome to another episode of our From the Helm series. I'm Grady Wolf, Senior Market Analyst with Bell Financial Group. The defence sector has been running hot in 2025 amid rising geopolitical tensions and increased spend in the space as countries review their defence strategies. One name in the sector that Bell Potter has been very bullish on for quite some time now and that continues to make waves in the counter drone technology market is Drone Shield. Today I'm thrilled to be joined by Oleg Vornik, the CEO of Drone Shield. Oleg, thanks for joining me again today. Thanks for having me, Grady. Now, countless new announcements, including a very recent one on the market about the appointment of a new a member to the team and contracts, including the signing of a record contract recently with a European client. How has momentum grown in FY25 and what impact does this have on the output and outlook for Drone Shield? We're seeing strong momentum for our counter drone products right across the world. The most uh, recent large sale of $62 million to a European military customer is what we're now busy uh, fulfilling and will be all done this quarter, as we mentioned in the original ASX release. But then there's been a $9.7 million Latin American sale, a $32 million sale in April to an Asia Pacific customer a $11 million contract with the 5i military, and this is all very recent. So we are continuing to see very strong demand for our counter drone products, and the business is continuing to grow. So we're we're expecting to hit 400 people by end of this year, substantially engineers, and Ukraine continues to show new inventions in the drone warfare and how it's central to any military conflict going forward. And civilian market, I think, will also start kicking in in terms of airports, stadiums, and so on. Now, you recently announced the expansion of a drone shield R&D, including an initial $13 million investment into the expansion of production facilities right here in Sydney. What will this do to the output and how much will this enable growth of drone shield? Today, we have approximately $500 million in annual production capacity, which has been fine so far. So last year, we did about $57 million in revenue. This year, we have locked in roughly about $170 million and, and climbing for, of revenue for the year. But going forward, we expect to need more. So we have started this expansion program that by end of 26 will get us to about $2.4 billion annual capacity, and that is across an enlarged new Sydney facility, um, a great R&D space, which also helps the manufacturing ramp up of our Australian contract manufacturers. So in Australia, we do things in a couple of ways. We do our own contract. We do our own manufacturing with the Australian supply chain, as well as a couple of contract manufacturers. And now we're setting up European as well as US contract manufacturers to further help our sales in those regions. How do you use AI in drone shield technology and has that enhanced the offering for clients over the last few years? We started using AI about five years ago before it was as trained as it is today. What we found was there are thousands of new drones that come out every year and up to then we used to have a more radio frequency library based approach. So you detect drone by comparing its essentially RF fingerprint to your known database. But with all new drones coming out, you need ability to detect never seen before drones. So we started to develop AI algorithms and AI is less about algorithm itself, but about very large, clean, well-tagged data sets. So we started collecting our own proprietary library of Japanese drones in Japan and, and drones, narco drones in Colombia and various drones in the US and in Europe, including Ukraine, um, terrorist drones in Africa and Asia Pacific and so on. And now I believe we have the largest library of its kind in terms of the drone signals in different environments. And then our devices, which are deployed all around the world, will then use this consent to enable you to send the data back to us. So often question gets asked, well, you know, Drone Shield, you operate a global business, but you are at the end of the world in Sydney, nice place to live, but you're not exactly at the front of where it all happens. So how do you how do you do it? And the answer is we have these relationships with end users around the world and they send us this data that we add to the AI engine. And then every quarter the engine looks at the edge cases, gets better and is increasingly able to deal with never before never seen before threats. Now, how competitive is the landscape on a global scale for the provision of counter-drone technology in this day and age? 
there are enormous amount of competitors. If you go to a defense trade show, it feels every company is suddenly a counter-drone company. When we started 10 years ago, we were probably one of very few and in a lot of places really the only counter-drone company to, to speak of. The challenge back then was, does anybody need a counter-drone system? Now it's more, you know, you're looking through all the different people uh, coming up. Now, we developed a number of differentiators over the years. Some of them are technical differentiators. So I believe we have the largest engineering team in the counter-drone market in the world. We have commercially the uh, very deep tier one relationships. And with that feedback data from our devices and brand name recognition, when you are in defense tenders, you need your NATO compliances and, and, and various certifications and, and go through a string of demos. So for example, the $62 million contract, that was several years in the making, even though it feels a bit like an overnight success. So these are all of our unique offerings and um, I welcome new competition. It makes the market, it raises the bar high for everybody involved and then to anybody thinking about it, I say, give it a go. But I think most people are finding it's a bit more difficult than they expect with evolution of drones as much as it is. In fact, I feel that we're not really competing against other counter drone companies, but more, frankly, Chinese government, which is actively seeking to make what you have as a $5,000 drone you buy in your local electronics store resistant to detection and defeat by traditional counter drone techniques. What is the global addressable market in FY26 for drone shield products and services? We estimate the TAM to be about US $10 billion and that's a combination of military and civilian markets. Um, in terms of how it's going to unfold, it's, it's a little difficult to say. The actual revenue size is obviously going to be less because the market penetration is still super low. So I would say vast majority of users that need counter drone <clears throat> don't have it or have very little of it. So the key interest here is how quickly will the users start acquiring counter drone systems? And Ukraine is obviously continuing to drive the the, the need for why you need a counter drone system and why any future conflict will have one. Uh, so uh, we think that uh, potential for us is significantly in the multiples of what we're currently achieving in terms of the revenue. Now, cybersecurity and software protection are crucial in this era with so many cyber attacks going on around the world. How have you managed to protect drone shield software from cyber attacks? Well, cyber comes in a couple of ways. One, there is what's sitting on the device itself, and then there is the cyber protection of the business itself. And now we have a dedicated security team, which is a separate engineering team to the rest of the engineers, so actually creating the product itself. And so you have various degrees of security in terms of how you encrypt your devices. And yes, it's a great degree of encryption, but nothing is unbreakable at the end of the day. Then you have different bits of information that need to come together. For example, if you manage to hack into our device without that AI database that I was talking about earlier, the algorithms themselves are of limited use. And then of course, the rapid speed of development of the industry itself serves the deterrent because even if somebody figures out how we used to do things 12 months ago, that is not much use in terms of our current algorithms and so on. And then within the business itself, you look at things like <clears throat> um, your uh, insider threats, so people having information on as need to know basis, your physical protection. So a number of defense companies, for example, had issues with protesters breaking into the premises. Uh, so so there, there's quite a layered approach to security, both cyber and physical, that we have to adopt. And we have a, a, a great guy leading our security team, and, and uh, that, that team is making uh, rapid changes to how we operate. What can clients expect over the next 12 months on a news flow front out of Drone Shield? And have you got any other products and softwares in the pipeline at the moment? There'll be several types of releases. There'll be new announcements of sales. Uh, so that will be ongoing. We have a $2.4 billion pipeline and that'll be growing over time. And any material sale we will be releasing out. New products. So we're currently busy working on next generations of virtually all of our products. A drone shield products have a roughly a three to four year life cycle hardware wise. So if you think of it like your iPhone or your laptop, it will continue to work, but naturally you want the latest, especially if your life depends on it. Quarterly software updates help, but you ultimately do need to 
upgrade the the hardware uh, and then there'll be general expansions like we, we're talking about expansion of production in in the us in europe so we'll, we'll be seeing ongoing operations related uh, announcements uh, and then of course we have raised uh, quite a bit of cash last year we're continuing to actively look for acquisitions in adjacent fields to what we do um, it will be relevant to the counter drone space uh, so where there's different ways of sensing defeating drones complementary to what we do we we are busy looking out for potential targets Oh, like thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for joining us for this special defense themed from the helm episode with Oleg Vornik, the CEO of Drone Shield. If you like this episode, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all market commentary, insights and of course, exclusive interviews just like this one.